Hi everyone, my name is Lucio, welcome in the workshop. In this video I want to show you how I painted the rock god troll gods, or just a troll to keep it easier. Plus, I want to explain why I think the brush licking habit is dumb. Base for troll skin is a mix of marm green and ash grey. Let's back in topic and start from the basics. What all mini painters use are acrylic paints, and the clean paints are basically a plastic substance with various pigments in it. Now you can argue and tell him there's nothing bad with leaking, because it's level at non-toxic, right? Well, unfortunately, non-toxic just means there aren't evidence of toxicity yet. Of course you won't ever suffer an acute poisoning, but there aren't proof about long-term poisoning. Plus, we should consider we tend to use a large variety of mediums while painting, flame brewer, thinner, master mediums, and those mediums aren't non-toxic at all. For the Trogod's shadows, as you see, I simply add some Nagarot Knight to the base mix. You can play with the purple quantity to achieve various levels of shadows. Even if the paint is 100% safe, you should consider that acrylic, like I said, is a plastic material and your liver can't filter it, nor either your skin. Clogged pores with polymers and solvents can be bad as well. The assumption of water-based makes people think that water is the solvent, but it's not. It just means you can clean it up with water. And again, someone can tell me, my lips make the perfect tip. Well, guess what? You can achieve same result with a paper towel and the soft twist of the bristles on it. Or you can use two brushes, so you pick one while the other is drying. I mean, there are tons of ways to avoid this bad habit. For this torso, I'm pushing shadows over the limit to give a good contrast. In the deepest recesses, like the armpit, I use pure Nagarot Knight. Another thing I usually heard around is, we already live in a contaminated world, smog, pollution, smoke, so licking paint is nothing new. Hmm, true, but they have two objections. First, breath is different from swallow, our nose have a filter function in it, our throat doesn't. Second, considering we live in a polluted society, why should I have an unhealthy habit on my own? A lot of people think saliva is a good way to have the perfect fine tip, and I say, yes, it is. I use saliva as well, but only after I wash my brush with soap and only when I put it aside, which makes the brush leaking again useless. Can achieve the same result without leaking anything, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and again, is saliva a good medium? Yes it is, but it's nothing so extraordinary, you probably already have tons of mediums, every passionate and professional painter does. Last reason can be the only one that is really true, you like it. And here I cannot judge the personal taste, if you like it fine, but at least do not talk about it like it's something wonderful, cause it's just an habit. Or maybe an addiction, who knows, I'm ready to discuss in the comment section if you want. Now let's go back to the paint job without any saliva. Here it's how the shadows looks like, I want to give more contrast on his torso while I leave some smoothness on his belly. Well, 
We start highlighting the skin using Skarsnik Green in the base mix until you reach pure Skarsnik Green. I plan to make other two troll gods using a slightly different skin tone. We'll eventually show him on my Patreon page sooner or later. We start adding deep game flesh into the previous mix. We'll focus on little stripes of skin. As you can see, I give an extreme contrast to his torso, I'll do the same with his head. Generally I'll tend to highlight more the higher miniature parts. In this way I can follow a zenithal light rule. Light is coming from above, which means lower parts like leg and foot won't receive the same light like his head will. As you can notice, belly is big and roundy, so the highlight is much smoother. Maybe it's just me, but how weird is those struggles anatomy? Maybe they drink a lot of beer, or paint. Let's move to the head. Before assembling, it's essential to paint his tongue with a base of Screamer Pink and the henna highlight of Emperor's Children. Let's finish the base colors for his head, Shapti Bone for teeth, Scrag Brown for the leather and Mechanicus Standard Grey for rocks. Considering how small some head details are, it's a good idea to use Druki Violet as a shadow color. Had to follow the same pattern I used for the torso, but all contrasts are even more extreme and less realistic. I 
I decided to give him a red eye using Evil Sun Scarlet with a black pupil and a white reflex. To give a cool touch for his head, I gave him a thin glaze of Emperor's Children on his lips. For once I decided to follow GW's idea. Here you can see the completed eye. I usually tend to not make eyes, to avoid mistakes or some kind of strabism, but this eye came out well. For the face's edges, I decided to go even further with the highlights. In this case, I added Ushapti bone with deep skin flesh and Skarsnik green. To avoid mistakes, it's good to show all the leather parts and wood parts of each trogot. I wanna say again, I'll show the other two trogots on Patreon, sooner or later. Before I forget, I wanna say I made teeth with a wash of Seraphim Sepia, highlight with Screaming Skull, and sides with Balor Brown. In the meanwhile, I made all the rocky parts using green skin flesh. You'll see soon why. Before applying shadows or highlights on his back, I decided to give a wash of Amart Blue all over the green parts. You ask why? Easy, cause all the green parts will look like emeralds. While we waited the wash to dry, we can start highlighting his skirt. Skirt which is basically the tunic of a dead goblin. Poor little goblin, such unfortunate fate. We use all the grey stone gradually, from ashen grey, mechanicus, downstone and a bit of white scar, mixed with other grey tones. We are highlighting a fabric, so we wanna avoid sharp highlights. Emerald back is still in standby, so we can complete his wooden weapon, a big log with some moss and mushrooms on it. Rhinoxide is the base for the log, Wag flesh for the moss and Mephiston red for the mushrooms. For the logs highlight I used the sylvanet bark. This color is sold dried, so I needed to thin it a lot to make it usable. dry brush of moot green is the only highlight for the moss.
Mushrooms have two different highlights, Tro's layer orange on borders and the little white spots on his cap. I painted white as well the lower part of mushroom using Ushap the bone. The interior log part is brighter than bark, so I painted with Balor Brown, same color used to highlight nails, nails which have a Morphang Brown base. This troll is full of pimples, so it's a shame to leave him unpainted. Their base is a screaming pink and their light is a little dot of a nurgling green. The leather received a wash of Hagrax heart shade. Then you apply base again and start highlighting from scrap brown to balor brown. Rocks were made simply using all the grey tones with a sharp distinction between the rock faces. The shadows for Howard Emerald are done with a mix of green skin flesh and Cantor Blue. Add the several layers to have a deeper emerald green. Emerald faces are sharply divided, the edges will create a great contrast between dark and light spots. For the highlighted faces I used a mix of green skin flesh and temple guard blue. The second highlight is done by simply adding a bar of blue in the previous mix. And as a last highlight, we add the whole tone grey in the previous mix. With the hammeral edges finished, we can call it done. So, if you liked this video, leave a comment, share, subscribe or just leave a like. 
And if you want to know more about my works, follow me on my socials. See you in the next project. Bye.